we will now evaluate a line integral over a vector field for several different paths that start at the point negative 4, 0 and end at the point 0, 2. The vector field that we're going to integrate is y squared i plus x j. That can also be written as the vector y squared comma x. And we want to integrate f dot dr on a curve c. Just to make you aware of possible alternate notations, this could also be written as the integral of p dx, so y squared dx plus q dy, so x dy. So we're going to start where C is going to be a line segment that extends from negative 4, 0 to 0, 2. So we're going to just draw this line segment here. And so that's going to be our curve C1 that we want to integrate over. So R of T is going to be the point negative 4, 0 plus t times the difference, the vector that forms the difference between 0, 2 and negative 4, 0. So the direction is going to be the 4, 2 direction. And then t is going to be between 0 and 1 because when t is equal to 0, I start at this point, negative 4, 0. And when t equals 1, I end up at the point 0, 2. So r prime of t, in this case, is just that vector that gives us the direction for 2. So if I want to do the integral over the curve of f dot dr, Then I want to integrate from 0 to 1. f of r of t. So f of r of t is going to be y squared. So y in this case is, let me just bump that down so I understand what x of t and y of t are. So x of t, in this case, is going to be negative 4 plus 4t. And y of t is going to be 2t. So if I want to integrate y squared, then I'm going to be integrating 4t squared. And then x is negative 4 plus 4t. And now I want to dot that with r prime, which is 4, 2. And I want to integrate that dt. So here I'm going to integrate from 0 to 1, 16t squared, performing that dot product plus 8t minus 8 dt. Now finding antiderivatives, I'm going to get 16 thirds t cubed plus 4t squared minus 8t, all evaluated between 0 and 1. So that becomes 16 thirds plus 4 minus 8, which is in fact 4 thirds. So if I integrate this vector field along the curve C1, I get 4 thirds. Now I'd like to essentially perform the same integral, but over a different path that leads me 
from the point negative 4, 0 to 0, 2. So here, I'm going to follow the x-axis and then I'm going to follow the y-axis. And so C2 is going to be the line segment along the x-axis and then C3 is going to be the line segment along the y-axis. Okay, so let me start with the line segment along the x-axis. I'm going to label the parameterization as R2 of T. I'm going to start at the point negative 4, 0. And then I'm going to add plus T times 4, 0. That way at T equals 0, I start at the point negative 4, 0. But then at T equals 1, I end at 0, 0. Then I'm going to look along the path R3 of T. And along the path R3 of T, I'm going to start at the point 0, 0. And I'm going to add T times the 0, 2 direction. That starts me at 0, 0 at time T equals 0. And then at time T equals 1, I end up at 0, 2. Now, uh, let's make sure we understand what x2 of t is going to be. x2 of t is going to be negative 4 plus 4t. And y2 of t is going to be 0. And then x3 of t in this case is going to be 0 and y3 of t is going to be 2t. So here uh, we have say that x2 prime of t is 4 and y2 prime of t is 0 and then we have x3 prime of t is 0 and y3 prime of t is 2. So if I integrate over c2 for example f dot dr then I'll integrate from 0 to 1 of f of r of t. So Let's remind ourselves here that f is equal to y squared comma x. Okay, so f of r of t is going to be y of t squared comma x. So y of t is 0, so this will be 0 squared comma x, which is negative 4 plus 4t. And then I'm going to dot that with r prime of t, which is 4, 0. I want to integrate that dt. Well, when I take that dot product, I'm actually going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of 0 dt. And so in fact, I get 0. So no work is done by that force along that path. So if I'm going to integrate c3, f dot dr. That would be the integral from 0 to 1 of, again, remember this is y squared comma x. Okay, so y squared in this case is going to be 4t squared, and then x is going to be 0. I'm going to dot that with x prime, which is 0, and then y prime, which is 2 dt. And so that gives me the integral from 0 to 1 of 0 dt. When I do that dot product, I'm going to get 0. Okay, so both of those line segments gave me an integral of 0. So the integral over that curve, 
which is the sum of those two line segments of f dot dr is in fact zero. So the force along that path consisting of two line segments, right, does not perform any work on that object as it moves. Let's try one more path. That path C4 is going to be the arc of the parabola y squared minus 4. x equals y squared minus 4. So that's this parabola. We're going to call that C4. And then an easy way to parameterize that is going to be to let y equal t. And then if you let y equal t, then x must be 4, or x must be t squared minus 4. Well, then we have to let t go between 0 and 2 so that it starts at the point negative 4, 0, and then it ends at the point 0, 2. So we let y be t, so t ranges over the same values that y ranges over, 0 to 2. Okay, so that gives us an r of t. r of t in this case is t squared minus 4t. And then r prime of t in this case is going to be 2t1. So we now want to do the integral of f dot dr over that curve c4. And that integral is the integral from 0 to 2 of f of r of t. So again, we need to have y squared and x. So y squared in this case is t squared. And then x is t squared minus 4. So f of r of t dot r prime of t, which is 2t and 1, dt. So here we're going to get the integral from 0 to 2. Let's perform that dot product. So we're going to get 2t cubed plus t squared minus 4. And now we want to integrate that dt. So taking antiderivatives, right, we're going to get 1 half t to the fourth plus 1 third t cubed minus 4t, evaluated between 0 and 2. So this gives us a 1 half times 2 to the 4th, or 16, plus 2 cubed is 8, so 1 third times 8, and then minus 4 times 2. So if we add all that up, we get 8 thirds. So the work done by that force going along the arc of the parabola is going to be 8 thirds. So something I want you to notice is that we moved a particle from the point negative 4, 0 to the point 0, 2. But along a straight line segment, we had work of 4 thirds. And then along this parabolic line, uh, arc, we got twice as much work. We got 8 thirds. But then if we moved along the x-axis and then the y-axis, no work was done. So this is something that uh, is important to note, that line integrals over different paths are usually different. Okay, so the line integrals 
for the same vector field along different paths are usually different. So you should not expect to always get the same answer if you integrate over different paths. In other words, the path for this line integral does matter. Okay, finally, I'd like to conclude with one more example of work from physics. I want to find the work done by gravity. As a particle moves along a circle, a distance of 8,000 kilometers from the center of the Earth. So what I'm imagining is, is that there's a particle in orbit. Okay, so we're going to imagine that this particle is going to start here and it's going to move along a circular path, okay, say to there. And it always remains a distance of 8,000 kilometers from the center of the Earth. So my path here is going to be called C. Now I need to parameterize that path. So R of T, in this case, is going to be the radius of the Earth, or sorry, the radius of 8,000 kilometers away from the Earth. So it's going to be 8,000 cosine t, and then 8,000 sine t. So if a particle is moving along a circular path around the Earth, so it's in orbit, okay, then it's going to move along this circle, r cosine t, r sine t, where in this case r is 8,000 kilometers. Well, that means that the derivative, r prime of t, is going to be negative 8,000 sine of t, and then 8,000 cosine of t. Another thing that was going to be helpful to understand is that the length of r is going to be 8,000. It's the square root of 8,000 squared cosine squared t plus 8,000 squared sine squared t. But that is, in fact, going to be 8,000. So we want to find the work done by gravity. So we actually introduced the gravitational force field in a previous video. So the force is going to be negative g m for the mass of the Earth, little m for the mass of the particle, okay, over the magnitude of r squared dot, or sorry, times, that's not a dot, times r over the magnitude of r. So I'm going to write this as negative g m m over 8,000 squared, and then r over the magnitude of r, that's going to be cosine t, and then sine t. So I'm going to divide r by 8,000. So, so that is going to be my force. Okay, when I integrate, I'm going to have to compute over some curve C, I'm going to have to compute F dot dr. And I'm not actually going to put the limits of integration in, and you'll see why in a moment. But I'm going to integrate from A to B. Okay, F, which is negative g m m over 8,000 squared 
cosine t sine t dotted with negative 8,000 sine t 8,000 cosine t dt. So this is the integral from a to b. Um, I'm just going to bring out those 8,000s. So then I'm going to get a negative g m m over just 8,000 times. And then I'm going to get minus cosine t sine t plus sine t cosine t dt. Ah, well that's going to give me the integral from a to b of 0 dt, which is equal to 0. That means that there's no work done by the gravitational force as the particle moves in orbit. So whether it's a particle or a satellite or something moving in orbit, there's actually no work done by the gravitational force. And the reason why was because essentially when we computed f dot dr, right, it was equal to zero. So that meant that the path of the particle was perpendicular to the force. So that's kind of a cool little result. So if you have something in orbit, then the work done by gravity uh, is zero.